Hello friends, this is Supriya. Welcome back to my channel Biology Reader. Today in this video, we will study the anatomy and physiology of the human skin. So friends, let's get started. Let us take a quick overview on the human skin. Skin is the largest organ of the integumentary system forming the outermost layer of the human body. Besides skin, the integumentary system also includes hairs, nails, exocrine glands and nerves. A skin can be glabrous or hairless like the palm and sole of your feet and it can be hairy like the scalp and the underarms. A human skin mainly comprises two layers, epidermis and dermis. However, hypodermis plays an important role in providing communication between the underlying muscles and bones with the cells and tissues of the dermis and epidermis layer. A skin performs a significant role in providing a physical barrier between the internal organs and the external factors of the environment. Now we will discuss the anatomy of the human skin. To begin with, the epidermis is the topmost layer of the skin differentiated into five sublayers, and along with that it contains specialized cells like Merkel cells, melanocytes, Langerhans cells and keratinocytes. Basement membrane separates the epidermis from the dermis layer. Stratum basale is the first layer above the basement membrane and it contains cuboidal basal cells and one specialized Merkel cell that plays an important role in sensation. These basal cells divide and migrate upwards. Here one important thing to note that when these basal cells migrate upwards, they lose blood supply and become flattened that you could also see in this diagram. Basal cells first divide to form a layer called stratum spinosum. Here you will find some specialized cells like melanocytes and Langerhans cell. Melanocyte produces melanin pigment that is responsible for the skin pigmentation. And Langerhans cell is a type of dendritic or antigen presenting cell that protects the skin from foreign bodies. Then the cells of stratum spinosum migrate upwards and form a layer called stratum granulosum. Here the cells begin to die and become flattened. This layer contains more keratinocytes that synthesize keratin, a colorless protein. The old keratinocyte further move upwards. Stratum lucidum is the fourth layer present only in the thick skin like palm and sole of your feet. Stratum corneum is the thickest top layer of the epidermis that contains dead and flattened corneocyte. The dead cells in this region shed off after every 28 to 30 days. Now we will take a look into another important layer of the skin that is dermis. Dermis is a thick layer found between the epidermis and hypodermis. It is basically divided into two regions, papillary dermis and reticular dermis. Papillary dermis contain loose connective tissues and it appears in the form of epidermis ridges. Whereas the reticular dermis contains dense connective tissues that constitute the portion between the papillary dermis and hypodermis. Let us look into the components of the pilosebaceous unit in the dermis layer. Hair follicle originates from the follicular base or hair bulb. The cells in the hair bulb actively divide to form a hair shaft and the capillary network at the base provides blood supply to the cells of the hair bulb. Erector pili muscle contains smooth muscle fibers and it is attached to the follicular bulge. When it contracts, we experience goosebumps. The oil or sebaceous gland is an exocrine gland that secretes oil into the skin or it functions as a lubricating gland. It is absent in palm and sole of your feet. Then in our body, two kinds of sweat glands are present. One is eccrine gland and the other is apocrine gland. Eccrine sweat gland is located all over the body whereas apocrine sweat gland is found in hairy skin like armpits and growing area. Besides pilosebaceous unit, a dermis layer also comprises blood capillaries that supply blood to the cells in the dermis and epidermis region. Fibroblasts produce collagen, elastin and reticular fibers along the extracellular matrix and mast cell generates an inflammatory response. Then hypodermis is the layer found below the dermis layer it is not a part of the human skin but plays an important role by connecting the skin with the underlying bones and muscles. In addition, hypodermis helps in fat storage and thermoregulation. Let us discuss some major functions performed by the skin. It covers our body and acts as a physical barrier between the internal organs of the body and the physical, chemical and microbial factors of the environment. Skin comprises mechanoreceptors, thermoreceptors, etc through which we can sense the pain exerted through deep pressure and temperature. Skin provides the site for the synthesis of vitamin D, 
in which the 7D hydrocholesterol is converted into an active form of vitamin D or calcitriol that promotes bone remodeling. Skin has a tendency to regenerate after every 28 to 30 days. Dead cells reach the top layer of the epidermis where they grow hard and shed off from the skin. Skin secretes sweat and sebum that function as an antimicrobial agent. Sebum lubricates the skin and forms a slightly acidic environment to restrict direct contact of the microorganisms. Likewise, sweat also contains NaCl that inhibits the interaction of some microorganisms. Skin participates in the thermoregulation. Blood vessels in the skin release heat out of the body when temperature rises through vasodilation and retain heat as the body temperature drops through vasoconstriction. We will end up this video by discussing some fun facts about the skin. Skin is the largest organ of the integumentary system but in our body interior, small intestine is the largest one. Skin contributes nearly 12 to 15 percent of the body's weight. Skin is the outermost layer of our body that forms the first line of defense against physical, chemical and biological damage. The thickness of skin differs. Our feet has a maximum thickness of 1.4 mm whereas our eyelids possess the thinnest skin of 0.2 mm. The skin color is decided by the melanin pigment released by the melanocytes. More production of melanin gives the darker skin tone. So friends, this is all for today. To know this topic more in detail, you can visit our official website that is biologyreader.com. Link is provided in the description box. If you find this lesson useful, do like, comment, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon for more videos.